Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp and Corumba Fungicides and Pride Seeds. Joining us for this episode of the Corn School here on Real Agriculture, we are pleased to have Alana Surhan, market development agronomist with Pride Seeds, and Alana, the corn crop in Western Canada this year, the grain corn crop specifically. We've seen ample heat in most areas, the moisture is a little bit more variable, plenty of moisture in some pockets, and then others, uh, such as this uh, plot we're standing in here, uh, we can tell the bottom leaves are starting to fire off, so there's obviously some uh, some moisture, more moisture would be needed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, so we've had pretty good ample moisture up until this point. Starting to see a little bit of firing off in the bottom leaves, uh, some of those things shutting down to feed that ear that we want to fill. Um, growers this year are hoping for the best crop possible, obviously as in every other year, but this year specifically, uh, corn acres have undoubtedly shrunken down. Um, we've seen lots of growers backing out of acres, you know, in fears of the way the market had been trending um, in not such a favorable way. But for growers who held on to those acres, they're gonna be rewarded, no doubt. We see uh, in corn crops, grain corn crops here in Southern Manitoba have been looking especially strong. Um, we're definitely on track to have some phenomenal yields, some, some maybe record-breaking yields if this moisture um, and heat can really hold on later into the season. This is also the time of year where we're seeing the differences between varieties and, and the trait decisions that, uh, that growers made back in winter heading into this last spring. Yeah, absolutely. So coming into this year again, price and you know, you know the, the price of corn and the market price of corn being a huge factor and a driving factor in what growers were doing to make their decisions. Um, I myself uh, and our team of Pride Seeds, we've seen a, a little bit of variance here across Western Canada in that some growers were starting to, to go back to the ways of maybe just growing Roundup Ready hybrids. Um, and that was obviously based on a per acre price decision and you know corn borer not necessarily being present uh, in the last you know five, ten, eight years. Uh, my message as an agronomist is always to, you're paying for those traits and those products for a reason. Uh, it doesn't take long for an issue to set in and corn board to take out a large portion of your field. Uh, we want to make sure that all of our growers are making sound agronomic decisions and that's what we're here to do. Um, we can absolutely understand the, the different aspects of why maybe potentially growing a Roundup Ready uh, crop would be a, a lot better on maybe your uh, price per acre, but ultimately those, those traits, those GT traits, um, protecting against corn borer, fall armyworm, those other things, they're in there for a reason and they're absolutely added value into your product. So how have we seen that play out this growing season? Yeah, so absolutely. So. Um, Really, the, uh, we're, we're starting to get into the later end of the year here where some of our traits are going to be really showing off. Um, and our G2 products, uh, ultimately, they're going to give you that better protection. They're not going to be lodging. They're not going to be susceptible to that insect, that disease pressure. Um, so when you were growing a traded product, uh, you know that you have added value and that protection is going to hold on and it's going to ultimately help you get that crop in the bin. That, that crop is very important in a year like this year um, when prices are low uh, and we're looking for high yields, we need to make sure that we're protecting your investment. All right. What are you looking for for the rest of the, the growing season here in terms of uh, getting this crop through to the finish line, through to that good yield potential. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we still have a bit of a foggy memory or hopefully we have a bit of a foggy okay. memory from the fall last year where corn had stayed out over through winter. Um, growers were combining, you know, on Christmas day. Those are the kind of things that we don't want to hopefully see again. Um, confident in the moisture that we have. We're not at an excess right now. Uh, we're not in mucky wet fields, but uh, going forward into the harvest, we want to make sure that we're keeping an eye on things, making sure that things aren't lodging. We're taking a notice of what our ear height is, if we're having any drooping, if we're having any cannibalization, and why is that occurring? Is it potentially a hybrid thing? Is it a trait thing? Is it a nutrient thing? So there's things that growers can be learning from their corn crops all the time. Uh, so it's important to, to have your time at the lake, but to also make sure that you're out in the field and taking a good look at, and, and ultimately, you know, making sure that your investment is going to pay off for you. All right. Thanks for your time, Alana. You betcha. Thanks for having me.